it feels like embodiment work that can be inspiring just by us showing that, hey, being a mom actually makes you a better entrepreneur, CEO, investor, leader, thought leader. You know what I mean? Oh God. Yeah. I mean, feel, I feel like anything hard is going to make you better. Not in this like idealizing struggle sort of way, but just kind of in an, it is what it is. So let's just stop like pretending it's not. So like, I feel like anything hard is going to make you better. And then being a mom is the hardest thing in a great way. It's also the best thing. I just don't, I don't think hard is a bad word. So it just inevitably just makes you better at Welcome back to Euphoric Evolution, where we transform leaders into legends. I'm so excited for today's episode. We are literally just going to have a heart-to-heart chitty chat with Meadow Mary. So Meadow and I have known each other a few years now, but we'll get into a little bit more about that. Welcome, Meadow. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm good. Thank you for having me me. I'm so excited to have you. I'm also really excited to just get to participate in you becoming more and more visible and doing more podcast interviews. So I'm just going to drop here at the very beginning if anyone's interested in having Meadow on. Mm -hmm. Like, What a better medium (laughs) than co-creation. Right? In the purple. So fun. So good. So Meadow, can you start by just sharing a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey? What's brought you to this moment? Oh my gosh. We are going to talk till three, aren't we? (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) Oh, I would like to say that I've always been this like super focused, driven person who When backed up against a wall, you see my best self and I just always, no, mm -mm. like not one of those people that was going to do my own thing ever. Wasn't like, didn't pop out of the womb with characteristics that make you good at this at all. Really was just found myself seven months pregnant with my second kid and wasn't able to return to my old job and needed some money. And, um, started selling skincare, started selling skincare for another company, for a company. Obviously I didn't like make skincare. Well, not obviously. I mean, people don't know me, but I didn't make my own skincare. I was selling it for a company. And, um, much to my surprise, realized that I was really good at helping not only selling skincare, but helping women do their own thing, helping women start their own businesses, get over confidence hurdles, find their voice, have fun with it. And, uh, ended up being (laughs) like out of over 400,000 consultants ended up being ranked 114th at like helping women start successful businesses. So that was a total surprise. And then wanted to do it for their own work in the world. I wanted to help women start their own, their own businesses, not like skincare businesses, but like their true work in the world. Started that very like naively, just kind of, I'm going to do this and see how it goes. And, uh, it's been, I mean, it has been, it's been like seven years and I can't, I mean, I love it. I can't imagine doing anything else. It's like the best thing ever, but it, it very, very, very much was a story of like stumbling upon zone of genius, stumbling upon something after like, I think 30 some jobs where I was either fired or quit or <laughs> like unbelievable, like a horrible employee, Makosi, horrible employee can totally relate I'm an awful employee I was I had yeah. so many jobs it was like I was changing right everywhere. and like <laughs> walking around probably if we're if we're at all similar in this probably walking around going why is everybody else so good at this thing called like working like just kind of flipping the switch off when you go to work doing your thing and flipping it back on when you get home and enjoying your weekends and then going back on Monday and doing it again. I was horrible. at that. So I have a question. Do you feel like you started by sharing your story that you now, like looking back on your life, you weren't born 
an entrepreneur, but do you feel like mm. there was some, mm. do you feel like being an entrepreneur um, is like nature? It's probably different or for nurture everyone, or necessity. Right? I mean, I think you'd probably get a different answer depending on who you talk to. For me, it was, it was very much like determination mixed with, mixed with like necessity and, and, and night, uh, like complete, I never know how to say this word, but naivete, like, what is that word? But complete, like, yeah, just, just not even knowing what I was getting into. But that, I mean, that's the beginning of like every great story. It's just like, let's see how this goes. My dad, like I have this image of my I dad no and I channel it quite often let's figure where he's it out. wearing like dusty work gloves <laughs> and he just like slaps his hands together and goes, time to do something even if it ain't right. And I feel like that's my life. <laughs> I feel like that makes for a good entrepreneur though, because, well, at least what I've seen, I'm sure you see this with the women that you help often, but I see so many people because they they think that they need to know what they're doing before they do the thing. So they like, they're like, I've got to create a business plan. Cause we're taught that's what you're supposed to do. I've got to create this business plan. I've got to build out my ideal client avatar. I've got to, you know, have a marketing strategy on day one. They've literally not worked with anyone yet. They, don't even know <laughs> they have no idea if people even want <laughs> you know. what it is that they're yeah. offering. Right. <laughs> like, what even is my offer? Right. And end up like, you know, three, six, 12, 24 months later, still not having gotten any traction because they're completely in the mind instead of the yeah. reality, the oh, actuality completely. of yeah, like um, entrepreneurship. So maybe and I will revise my answer actually doing it. and saying like, that uh, born, born with these, I didn't, I didn't think this was a quality of entrepreneurship, like, like naive presence, so to speak, but maybe, maybe, well, I don't think we've ever talked about this, but, but when you were pregnant with Aiden, did you have a birth plan? Oh my gosh, I did. <laughs> I did have a birth okay. plan and I, so this is really funny. I learned. Are you going to do no birthing? So I learned how to like hypnotize myself. I had this whole entire plan, by the way. Oh my God, Makosi, yes, I have yes, a I post was. that says business plans are like birthing <laughs> plans <laughs> and <laughs> the worst is like hypnobirthing. It's like, I'm gonna have an orgasm when this baby comes out 100%. Yeah, um, none of that happened. Literally 0% happened of that. Um, it was like the biggest lesson in surrender because, you know, I, I wanted him so bad, right? Just like we want success so bad. And I thought, oh, if I can control every little aspect of this, then it's more likely to succeed. So, you know, I had, I had planned on getting pregnant. We had worked for a year to get pregnant. I had plans for how, you know, the pregnancy was going to go. None of that happened. I was on bed rest for six months out of the, my pregnancy. So then the he ended number. up coming early by emergency Literally. section, yeah. right? So I had this whole, li literally the opposite. I was in the hospital trying to like be in my mode, trying to hypnotize myself. And they're like, no, we need you to get back in the bed. <laughs> we can't, he, we're not getting a heartbeat. We need you to get back in the bed. And so on and so forth. I have lots of perspectives about that now, but this guy, and I think, I think that is one of the blessings of children that can be really helpful and why I think mompreneurs are like freaking superstars because having children is one of the biggest lessons in surrender and everything that you thought you knew about who you were, what you were going to do in this life, what matters, so on and so forth, ends up changed, right? You oh end up, God, yeah. I mean, it Kids completely changed the trajectory you of my life. Zero it sounds control like over anything, it did the same let alone too. like how they turn out. Yeah. Speaking of kids, I, I want to get into this with you a little bit, because one of the things that I admire about you most, and I think it's a direct result of being a mom, um, your ability to 
be oh, yeah. very effective again in your business out of necessity like work. this isn't something i wish i could be like yeah. yes i planned that and it's like Ow. come on you know it's like if you have a handful of minutes i mean i think kids are the best for for not only teaching you that you have absolutely no control over anything but also um and pushing your most secret guarded buttons ever and but this is the one that I wanted to bring up, <laughs> like letting you know how very much you wasted all your time before. Like I remember a friend of mine, he's so funny, um, a friend of mine since like, I mean, sixth grade, he had, he had two kids. He has, he has two kids and they're similar ages. And he, but his oldest was born like a little before Jonah, my oldest. And I remember hanging out and he was just like, you know, in that sleep deprived state. And he was just like, Meta, I could have written like 800 books in the free time that I used to have. And I don't understand what I was doing with my life before. And I feel like that puts you in this position where like I would get 15 minutes when they were napping because I had two, two, they were like, they were, they were like under three. Yeah. They were two and a half when I started my business. And in diapers, you know, and when they would nap together, it was just like, ah, oh, in 15 minutes, I was doing live. I wasn't changing out of my pajamas or doing my hair. I was doing a live in my whatever that I was wearing, breastfeeding sometime, doing a live, but like I would out of necessity, again, it wasn't like in hindsight, I'm, I'm really I like how that went down. I'm like kind of proud of myself for that. But, but in the moment I was just, I knew I wasn't going to get another 10 minutes. So, so you just like do it. I remember one live, a guy came on and was like, I, you are, you are in your pajamas. Like I would never hire you. Mm, well, <laughs> and I was like, good thing. Oh, Cause well, I would not is... want to work oh, with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was, I'm not usually good in moments like that. Um, like, I always think of, like, really cool things to say, like, 20 minutes after, like, three years after. <laughs> but in that moment, I was like, you know, but my clients actually hire me because of this. Like, they hire me because I don't put anything between sharing my message and, and what I look like right now. And it shows them that they can. Like, anybody can do this, really. What have you learned about like the different stages of motherhood and entrepreneurship? Because, you know, I'm on here today. I look fabulous. However, I also um, in my early entrepreneurship days, I also got started. Aiden was one year old uh, when I like really went all in before that. I had a few instances, but when I really went all in on entrepreneurship and I didn't have a job to fall back on, he was one, right? And so the way that I showed up was very different then because I was with a toddler full time, right? And now here I am, he's gonna be 11 in the next few months. We are about to start homeschooling again, right? So I am running a business, homeschooling, and also, you know, the other, some of the other mom things, I'm very grateful to have taken some of those things off of my plate, like laundry and cleaning. I do have support with that. Um, and my husband also is a great cook. That helps. But. Mm. Oh, definitely. isn't that the hottest it's thing? The, like it is the absolute best. He made me avocado toast first thing this morning. And I was like, not only, it, it wasn't like a bowl of cereal, which still would have been <laughs> nice, but it was a mindful, like, here's something nutritious to fuel you. But how do you approach entrepreneurship differently now that they are older? And how have you like evolved with the seasons of motherhood alongside entrepreneurship? How does your business look different today than it did when they were two years old? Well, it's a lot nicer, isn't it? Right? I mean, <laughs> you can like, they can like 
go to the bathroom on their own and and they can like i mean they're 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 way more self-sufficient than they were although they're not completely so you get like working hours now right i mean you get working hours and you get to you get to like put clothes on a deodorant <laughs> okay. shower do my hair you know like i'm i really do um, although it was hard, I mean, I really do think just starting in the trenches and, and it just keeps getting easier as far as that's concerned. I mean, entrepreneurship gets, <laughs> gets harder, but, but as far as like balancing it with, with family and stuff, I feel like that stuff just gets easier and easier and easier. Um, and I'm glad that I started when I did, because if I can do it then, like this is cake, you know? Do you feel, do you feel similar? I do feel similar. I feel like it's different though, in a lot of different ways. I for sure love having some, just like a chunk of time where I can focus on what I need to do and not also be breastfeeding or pausing to change a diaper or, you know, all of the things that I had to do in those early days. And it's also why when I have clients who are young mothers, um, or mothers to young children. That's what I mean. I mean, either way works, but mothers to young children. I'm very adamant about them. Number one, not feeling any guilt or shame about your kids coming on the screen, about breastfeeding while you're on with me, um, you know, having to pause to calm a screaming <laughs> child in the background. Like, I feel like that should just be normal for all of us that, hey, if we want to perpetuate and and leave a legacy, part of it does involve kids, right? Because none of yeah, us are- Absolutely. Living. Like, yes. And like, isn't it much more fun to learn how the parts of our lives can can support each other rather than compartmentalize in such a way that like, then it's just kind of like they're siloed and I I'm really visual and and I feel like on their own they just kind of wobble and can fall but like I feel like they can all just be wildly supportive of one another and fueling one another I remember getting on a getting on a a like a, a zoom call for a course that I was in and um and Caleb was was on my lap and uh I was reprimanded I was I was scolded and told that that I couldn't bring him back not even to think about it do not even think about bringing about returning to this class <laughs> with, without child care I was like oh okay I thought it was completely normal I'm glad that you thought it was normal and I think it's going to be important for people like you and I to normalize that right I think the only way that people don't get chastised for doing one of the most important jobs in our society, which is raising the next generation, right? I don't like the idea that we, we treat kids and we treat elders like they're um, accessories, accessories to our life that we can just like take, take off or set aside at certain periods. No, from my perspective, who you are being in one area is affecting other areas and it isn't all bad, right? For me, actually being a mom contributes so much benefit to being a CEO with a team of, like I have a decent amount of mothers who are on my team. I, I have a decent amount of clients who have children and are trying to navigate what it looks like to run a business and also have kids. I think, I think we're doing like, I don't know, it feels like embodiment work that can be inspiring just by a showing that, Hey, being a mom actually makes you a better entrepreneur, CEO, investor, 
leader, thought leader. You know what I mean? Oh God. Yeah. Like, I mean, feel, I feel like anything hard is going to make you better. Not in this like idealizing struggle sort of way, but just kind of in, and it is what it is. So let's just stop like pretending it's not. So like, I feel like anything hard is going to make you better. And then being a mom is the hardest thing in a great way. It's also the best thing. I don't, I mean, I just don't, I don't think hard is a bad word. Um, so it just inevitably just makes you better. At- yeah. It's like, what are we worth? What is worth struggling for? Right. There's struggle. Yeah. There's struggle just to be struggling, suffering just to be suffering. Right. But then there's challenge, which actually creates the opportunity for more growth. And there, I mean, and as a byproduct of that, more abundance in the form as if we're talking about kids, right? It's like more love, more connection, more, um, I mean, there's a lot of great things, but yes, it is also (laughs) simultaneously very difficult to pull off this whole parenting thing and keeping people alive. Sure. But that's like, that's like the job. It's like, let's just keep them alive. And, and um, yeah, I mean, I feel like there's this, there's this juxtaposition or dichotomy, or I don't know what the word is, but it's like, it's between like excelling at parenting in the way that, you know, you're supposed to create this child in this, in this, like, and they're supposed to exceed and, and surpass and, you know, succeed as well. And like all of these things and these markers and milestones or whatever, and in that way, I feel like none of those are there for me. And I'm just like, hey, are you happy? Are you breathing? Are we good? Awesome. And then <laughs> on the other hand, it's like parenthood, hard, you know, so thankful for it. But but yeah, just it's not hard because of this stuff. Because I don't even like pay attention to that stuff. And maybe that's kind of, I feel like there's so many analogies between parenting and, and business. I mean, I'll talk a so much. I talk so much about birthing a business and birthing, you know, babies and how we just, we can't do this stuff alone. And we're not supposed to do this stuff alone. I mean, we're supposed to be held by a village of women who come before us. Right. So, um, and I feel like in this day and age, we need to find our villages and our villages are virtual and, and yeah, I mean, Ideally, one knows themselves enough and knows what they want enough to to seek out villages that that really encourage comprehensive like business, comprehensive mothering, comprehensive partnership, and all those things. It's like they're all this. They're all they're all the same. I almost swore. I'm not going to swear. Can swear. <laughs> You can swear because we can just like bleep it out. Um, yeah, bleep it so, out. So speaking of speaking of quote unquote, all the same though, hard, right? I mean, so hard stuff, right? What do you feel like has been the greatest challenge or the greatest revelation that you needed to have in order to create success in in business? My gosh, I feel like we need to like hold each other during this because I feel like I'm going to be super like super like like emotional or like hand holding like oh my gosh isn't it but i'm going to i'm going to but it's true what i'm going to say is is true for me um and i feel like it's true for so many people so i feel like most people think in order to succeed in business they need the right strategy or they need the right business idea or the right business model or the right business whatever and i feel like what most people actually need and are lacking and what has been the biggest shift and continues to still be a dance that I, that I dance with and very actively and consciously try and remember and cultivate is, um, is realizing that one is special, unique, gifted, that I have talents and gifts and that, yeah, I mean, those like just remembering that, remembering that, and learning, learning that and then remembering it. And most people are coming in and they're trying to, and I feel like for women in particular, 
because we do naturally like kind of spread our awareness around to all things. And we can't just have that single focus, like, like laser focus naturally. I could be making this up, but I think, I mean, this is what I see is that women tend to bring everything, right? So, so if we're being asked to remember that we are like talented and gifted and, and, you know, genius individuals in aspects of our lives, we're also remembering the shit and the, the bad stuff. And we're like, but then there's, but there's this. And it's like, so I feel like that's, I mean, that's definitely been the hardest part for me is just um, reminding myself and remembering, remembering that. And, and I feel like when somebody has that and when somebody is in that zone, they, they just are naturally kind of shining, naturally magnetic, naturally just the other stuff just kind of rolls off their back. You mentioned that for you, you didn't, you didn't come into entrepreneurship realizing that, Hey, I have a gift in X, Y, Z. And I find that a lot of, a lot of people who come into this space don't actually know what their genius even is and, or they are mistaken about it, right? Because they've built their identity on, you know, the stuff that was really hard for them to overcome, but they did it. And so they feel a certain level of pride in having mastered those things, right? So for example, one of mine is um, the sciences, right? Like I spent a lot of time studying the sciences and I, I thought that was my genius. It, it can be really hard to see ourselves. What helped you see yourself, remember your genius, find your zone of genius? Oh gosh. I wonder if this is similar with you. I want, I'm, I'm super curious, but for me, it's been like really working with people who just remind me, allow me to remember kind of thing. Cause although I believe that I don't think we get, I don't think we can build a muscle of faith and belief without borrowing other people's first, you know, I think I, I mean, that would take a, a exceptional being to like, in the absence of other people's, you know, faith and belief in them, like, like nobody, you know, and then cultivating it on their own. I, that's, that's, that's incredible. But for, for, I feel like it's more common that we borrow other people's faith and belief as we build our own muscle. And, um, and yeah, I mean, working with you, working with other mentors who remind me, um, when I'm, you know, tending to forget or am focused on something else or, or that kind of stuff, getting caught up in the, the wrong, the wrong stuff. I've been employing, cause I, I go through this, these kind of cycles where I take a little bit of time to hone in on, okay, am I still in my genius? Am I amplifying it? Am I using it to its best advantage? Or am I allowing myself to kind of dabble over into things that really I'm just competent at and it's not necessarily the best use of my energy? So I've been, I mean, I do this in a few different ways. But one thing that I have found works really well is becoming an observer, right? Become the observer of your life. And I make it like black, black and white, no music, no emotion to yeah. what I am witnessing. There's the sciences. I know, right? Um, <laughs> it, it, it peeps in every once in a while. Um, I, there's definitely... Yeah, There's definitely no, some some gifting that I have in the sciences just to even be able to understand them. But I think it's more on the analytical, logical side. But if I strip away all of that and I just can observe my life instead of being the one in my life and I look at, okay, what were the experiences where I was interacting with other people? Because number one, your zone of genius doesn't exist in a vacuum, right? Your zone of genius, you and I are both sitting in a room, no other people. If we are, if we never express our ourselves to other people or engage in relationship with other people, 
how are we going to know <laughs> what our zone of genius is? So if we can take a sec, a step back, right, and just look at what was happening when I was engaged with other people, what were they, what were they asking? What were they interested in with me? What were they, um, how did I feel with different types of people, right? Where was, where was I connected to certain types of people? What were those people like, right? And to me, this has helped a lot with really getting more clear and narrowing down what my zones of genius are. Like you and I share one. I'll just put it out there. We share an ability to simplify very well, seemingly complex topics, concepts, etc. Taking them, distilling them down into really simple, useful, actionable, practical things. And I don't know, do you feel like, do you feel like you would know that that was one of your zones of genius if you didn't use that with other people and also didn't get feedback from others? There's, there's, um, oh my God, there's so much that you just said that I want to like, leg hump. Um, but there's <laughs> like <laughs> our, um, which one do I want to like hump first? <laughs> we'll just oh follow your crotch. <laughs> follow up. Now there's the best business advice I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, I love yes, that. Yes, ma'am. Follow your crotch. I'm gonna make that a t-shirt. <laughs> you 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 should. And if you don't, I'm going to. <laughs> oh, can there be like a? <laughs> the old, I don't know. I don't think the camera's old big wrestling move to like. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. No, I mean the amount of people that come and are like, "What is my zone of genius?" And, and I, it's like, it's one of those things that you just can't directly approach. It's, it's a, it's over here. It's like, it's happening off to the side. It's, it's revealing itself. It's, it, it's, there are, there are things in life that when you approach them directly, they're like, uh, what is the thing that when you can't approach it directly? Oz is Oz something you can't approach directly? No. What is the thing you can't approach directly? There's something that it like you try to approach it and it disappears. A leprechaun? Oh, the oasis. Oasis. See? There you go. Yes. And your zone of genius is like it. It's like, it's like you can't set out and say, goal, I'm going to identify my zone of genius. And it's like, no, live your life. Your zone of genius will will identify itself and work itself out. There's um but I feel like, I feel like most, I feel like our natural knee jerk reaction a lot as, as people, maybe as women is just to identify the, the direct thing that we want and then focus on that when we're, when we're missing the thing we're actually supposed to be focused on. Um, but yes, that's like impossible. I mean, it's impossible to, to create and it's because it's a relationship, right? It's like, is a relationship that is that is building and forming and and revealing oneself or revealing itself and that's impossible without without action like it's impossible without interaction it's in, yeah um i feel like people i feel like their the zone of genius is like i mean i just love i love it i love talking about it i love witnessing people in it um I love the journey to it. And I love how um, people are always like expecting this, like blow your skirt up, like, like fireworks relationship. And it's literally like, it's your favorite pair of sweatpants. Like it's the thing you've always put on that you always go to. It's the thing you've always been doing in some way, shape or form. God bless you. It's, it's just always been there. You've always been doing it in some way, shape or form. Like 
It's naturally what people come to you for. It's naturally the lens you see the world. It's, it's, it's your favorite pair of sweatpants. It's not going to blow your skirt up because it's of you. It's like, it's so familiar. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel no like it's work. more like a duh, right? It feels more yeah. like a duh that? moment than yeah. fireworks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I just realized yeah. I'm a no. brilliant simplicity genius. <laughs> yes. It can't be that. That's what you hear most often. It can't be that. That's so easy. Yeah. To you. Yeah. There's something that you just said, or, or how many times like the, it can't be that easy. It can't can be, be that, that easy. easy. No, actually when you are looking at your various aspects, characteristics of yourself, really zone of genius is, is a characteristic, right? When you're looking at that, it is going to be the ones that are that easy the ones that you can kind of do in your sleep and love doing them because it's just an extension of who you are at the core. Everybody thinks other people's zone of genius are super sexy, but your own, you're like, what's that? Is that enough? Yeah. No, actually I would rather. <laughs> I would have your, your zone of genius meadow is so good. I hear, okay, like, no. And I was, I was telling the story the other day because, um, I was, but I had a client who was so, so, so brilliant at, um, building out, she would go in and she would build out these six figure sales funnels and just beautifully, she was more in like this, you know, like a consulting, like, like, um, contractor like you know she would go in and she would build these out and and she was just beautifully brilliant at the whole suite of what that entailed um videographer and and so she would do the whole thing and beautifully create this this like video you know sales funnel that would then just like wonderfully go nuts she was very much operating in her zone of genius in this like bringing in all these random aspects of who she was and using it to create this, this really cool offer. And she was like, Oh, but, but you're, and, and everybody else around her was like, man, that would be such a cool, like if I had that offer, I would be, I'd be set. Right. And in her mind, she was like, and she said this to me, she was like, Oh man, I would just love something like you do it would be so much just easier because you just like sit with somebody and you can see you know into the depth of what is you know keeping them stuck and then you can help them move through it and you can you know and I'm like it's just so funny how we all see somebody else's thing as being the sexy thing the easy thing and it's just not true I mean it's never been true it never will be true it's it's Wow. Have you ever, have you ever seen someone else's zone of genius and tried to replicate it because you thought it was amazing or like, oh, that's what I need. If I want to make money, obviously that works. I should do that thing. I think, I think we all have subconsciously. I don't think I ever said those words consciously like, oh, if I need to make money, I need to be more like this person. But of course, looking back, yeah. I mean, haven't we all? But yeah, I never, I never consciously said that. But yeah, thinking I had to be like more hard ass or more like less uh, approachable, accessible. Yeah. Funny. Yeah, that's kind of funny. That's I'm thinking like, back to the first iteration um, of this business that I'm in now was I was doing marketing for other people, which now I look back on it and it's not that I couldn't do it, right? Like I had competency. I had an ability where I could, but it wasn't like I... Oh, you're so good at marketing. Let's, let's be, let's be. <laughs> So yes, I, I feel like if I had spent more time doing strategy, 
in that, I probably would have succeeded better than being the person who was executing on whatever they thought their marketing strategy should be. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. You're, you're good at like being the, the, the brilliant marketing mind, but if somebody's going to come and tell you what they think they're marketing, no, you'd be like, oh, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that was yeah. probably why that didn't take off the way that I thought that it was going to. I can't even imagine hiring somebody for something like that and then pretending like I know better. Uh, that, that actually happens a lot. No, but but you think no, you experienced it. You've experienced it. I know you've had someone who hired you. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. had someone who hired you and was like, actually, I don't think that I don't think that this way of doing things is gonna work. I think you should do XYZ or say XYZ or show up in this specific way that I want in order to coach me. Ah, those are my favorites to not work with. <laughs> yes, that has happened. It is, it is, there have been more often than not though, because I like to know lots and lots about, I mean, I don't work with that many people. So I, I really like cultivate a bit of depth with the small amount of people that I work with, very boutique vibes. But more often than not, if, if they can see that that's how they kind of come at everything, like they're like, talking to their husband like that they're talking to their friends like that if I can like get them to see that that shit has blown up in their face because of this I'm like you want to try it this other way <laughs> might be more effective and I'm like okay you might get you might get a different <laughs> outcome oh gosh Maybe. story story of my life so we are coming to the end of our chitty chat today but I wanted to number one ask you where can people, if they want to get to know you better, where can they find you? Upstate New York. <laughs> in upstate New York. You can find me here in the glorious, glorious Finger Lakes region. You know, I'm on all the, I'm on all the things. I'm on, uh, I'm Meadow Mary on Instagram and Facebook and website, MeadowMary.com. Meadow Mary across the board. Love it. Keep it simple. Is there any final thing that you just feel like you want to share? It could be a piece of advice or question, anything that just needs to come out. Well, now I'm like searching for like the, the cool, the cool thing. I feel like this was just such a lovely conversation. I feel like we could, we could talk for many, many more hours. And yet I just have loved our conversation. I mean, if we, if we needed to, if we needed to like pick the thread of loveliness or pick a thread of loveliness. It would be like, this gets to be a lot easier than people are making it out to be. This whole ascension success journeying and that it's a hell of a lot more effective when you just lean into you rather than spending all of our time just being like, what's that person doing? Or what's that person? It's like the land that is all familiar and not as sexy as over there or over there. <laughs> Over there. Right there. Hi, you. Yeah. <laughs> right in there all along. Yeah, all, all along. Well, thank you so much for pulling that thread because it is 1000% true. It is like the truth that so many people don't want to hear. They want to know like, what's the, what's the magic pill? What is the thing that I can, um, that someone can can just show me to do. And if I do it, it will make all the difference when ultimately it's about the alignment with you and your truth. And mm -hmm. I think that we went through some really incredible topics. And I just want to say thank you so much for having this little chat with me today. I think so many people are going to get a lot of value from it. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.